Do you struggle to unplug from work, especially on vacation? Does every vacation end up in an argument between you and your spouse? I've been there more times than I care to admit, which is why I created a free checklist to help you unplug this summer. It's called 15 Ways to Effectively Unplug from Work on Vacation, and it's guaranteed to give you some fresh ideas for detaching and enjoying your vacation. Head over to karenfreeland.com forward slash work free vacation right now and get these 15 secrets. It's totally free and it will get you one step closer to living a more present and fulfilling life. Welcome to Rock Your Reinvention, the show for high achieving career women who refuse to settle for mediocrity and aren't afraid to take bold action. This is a place where you can authentically show up where every dream and goal can be validated and achieved. Hi, I'm your host, Karen Freeland, a certified life reinvention coach, speaker, and award-winning author. I'm here to give you the tips, tools, and strategies to help you shift your mindset, build your confidence, and take meaningful actions so you can rock your reinvention. Ready to go from stuck to thriving? Let's go. Stop saying, I could do it if I wanted. Or I would do it, but that's not really my thing. Or I'm not that interested. Today, I want to unpack why this statement is a problem and why I encourage you to either put your money where your mouth is or stop saying that and change your vocabulary. Hello, my favorite reinventors. I'm so excited that you have joined me for another episode of Rock Your Reinvention. And as always, I want to challenge your thinking, and I'm not doing this to make you uncomfortable, although I know sometimes it will. I'm really doing this so that you can live your most authentic life, so that you can have the career that you've always dreamed of, that you deserve, success beyond your wildest dreams, however you define success, and really help you get out of the confines of society and the pressures and the things that cloud our judgment and get us away from our true center, our true purpose. So we're going to go on a little journey today. And I want to take you back to, oh gosh, a couple months ago, I'm on a morning run. And let me just paint the picture of my runs because I, I don't know, sometimes when I hear people say I'm out for a morning run, I'm like, what did you do? Like four miles? Like, are you some sort of Olympic runner? I'm imagining them stretching out beforehand and they have this like really great running shoes and a really great outfit and they're toned from head to toe. And right, there's like this whole image that comes up when someone says, I went for a run this morning. And my runs are never more than one mile. I have my dog with me. He stops a good five to 10 times to go to the bathroom, sniff something, what I don't even know what he's doing sometimes. But I'm like, yeah, great. So I never really run a straight mile and I don't push myself because I don't really like sweating. So I just kind of like go on a leisurely jog with my dog, right? And that works for me. That's what I enjoy doing. So one day I'm out running and I don't know, I just have this thought that comes into my head. And I'm like, I don't know how people run 5Ks or how people run at 10K. That's insane. I mean, I know I could do it if I wanted. I could do it if I tried, but like, I don't really want to do that. I'm having this whole inner dialogue, right? And it sort of dawned on me, Karen, Did you just say you could do this if you wanted to? Well, then why don't you prove it? Why don't you do it? And in the same beat in my head, I'm like, I don't want to do that though. Like I would, but I don't want to. So there's no point. End of story, right? Like I have this little moment. Keep that in your back pocket for a second. And I'm curious how many of you have uttered that statement before. Think about it. Like how many times have you said, Oh, I could start that business if I wanted to. I could go back to school and get my master's if I wanted to. But yeah, but that's not really my jam. That's not really what I want to do. You know, I could totally get promoted if I wanted. Whatever it is, right? You just say these things. 
totally normal. My question is, what did you really mean by those statements? There's something underneath that. What was the intention behind it? And if I'm really honest, which, you know, I am an open book, I think a lot of us use that statement, I could if I wanted to, as a protection from failure. Because here's the thing, if you actually try and you actually want to do it, and then you don't, or it doesn't go the way you envisioned, we call ourselves a failure. We're like, oh, I blew it. I didn't succeed. And of course, you know, that's a whole other podcast around inner critic and the, the way we talk to ourselves. But ultimately, when we say, I would do it if I wanted, or I could do it if I wanted, we're really trying to protect ourselves from failure. Something else that sort of dawned on me as I was just putting some notes together for this show is that maybe another reason we say those kinds of statements is it's because it's something that you really don't want to do. But you just said that to basically justify your lack of interest rather than being truthful with yourself and acknowledging that actually isn't something I want to do. Maybe because you felt like people would think you were weird or you would look crazy to other people. Like, what do you mean you don't want to get promoted? What do you mean you don't want to be in the C-suite? And you're like, well, I would, but you know, it's just not really what I'm interested in or now's not the right time, right? You just come up with something, but really what you want to say is like, hell to the no, I don't ever want to be in the C-suite. That's not what I'm interested in achieving. And so I'm curious as you maybe think of a specific example for yourself. Can you think of a time when you have said that recently or in the past? And why do you think you said that? Was it a protection from failure? Was it because you were afraid to acknowledge publicly that that just wasn't for you? I mean, sometimes we really don't want to do it. Maybe we could do it if we if we did and we would be successful, but maybe that really isn't the direction we want to go into. Why do we come up with this excuse, well, I could if I wanted to, rather than just saying, that's not something I want to do? Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, I get an email, and it is about a 5K for the Julie Valentine Center. And the Julie Valentine Center is an agency that I've been able to work with through a volunteer organization that I'm a part of called the the Junior League of Greenville. And so we're a women's service organization and we have various agencies that we work with so that we can help advance their mission. And the Julie Valentine Center was doing a 5K as one of their main fundraisers. And I've seen it before and I thought about doing it in the past, but I'm like, I'm really not a runner. I that's not, I don't know if I could really do it or not. So uh, I have never signed up and usually we're on vacation or something. So this year I happen to be available and it pops up into my phone and I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like this is a direct challenge from the universe. I feel like God's like, okay, girl, put your money where your mouth is. Let's see if you can really run a 5K. Now, the Julie Valentine Center provides free confidential services and resources to support victims of sexual abuse, incest, child abuse, neglect, right here in Greenville, South Carolina. And one of the things that I am so proud of them for doing is they have a rape crisis center. So when a young woman is brought in for a rape exam, they have trained professionals who will be there right by their side and they bring them a change of clothing so they don't have to go home in the same outfit that they wore into the hospital and they're there right from the moment that they come into the hospital to provide them immediate support and it it just what they do is so amazing I, i hate that we need this in our world today but we do and so one of the things that has been so interesting to me since I started coaching is just the number of women who have disclosed, you know, my clients who have shared some form of trauma and abuse, sometimes sexual, sometimes physical, sometimes mental, emotional, but it's really 
sort of astronomical to me when I look at the numbers. It's about probably 50% of my clients. And those are just the ones that have disclosed it, right? And so this has really impacted me from a volunteer perspective. And it's really impacted me from a coaching perspective. And I thought, you know what? If I'm going to run a 5K, uh, I can't think of a better organization to do it for than the Julie Valentine Center. So I have accepted the challenge. And I thought, you know what? It's not that I don't want to do it. It's honestly that I didn't know if I could. And I was like, there's only one way to find out. I am going to start running and training for this. So I signed up. My son is going to do it with me. It's in the beginning of August. And I've been training now for just about a month, uh, pretty much. Uh, I think I signed up right at the beginning of June. So I'm almost halfway uh, to the time that this is actually going to happen. And here's the thing that has been so amazing to me is that I didn't know how I would do with this. I really wasn't sure how this is going to run 3.1 miles nonstop. And at the time of this recording, it is July 3rd. And this morning, I did a 5K in under 30 minutes, 28 minutes and 29 seconds. And I have gotten my one mile time down to seven minutes and 24 seconds when I'm like really booking it for time. So I'm sharing this with you because, yeah, we all say in our head, oh, well, I could do that if I wanted. But that is such a different feeling and a different motivation than when you actually do it. Because now I know without a shadow of a doubt, I can absolutely do this. I've run two 5Ks in the last month, something I've never done before in my life. And I'm going to run probably two more before the actual day, if not more, but definitely two. And it's so amazing. I mean, the confidence boost I have, just knowing the cause that I am doing this for, I mean, there's so much that goes into this that just lights me up and reaffirms that I can do hard things and that I'm so much more capable than I give myself credit for. And I'm not unique to that. Every single one of you who are listening right now, you have potential Beyond your wildest dreams, that business you want to start, that book you want to write, that screenplay you have an idea for, that podcast you want to start, that nonprofit, that youth group that you want to start, like, I don't, whatever it is. I mean, I could just sit here and list a million things, right? But whatever that thing is that you have been saying in your head, I know I could do it if I wanted. I I probably could, you know, I'd be great. It would be great. Just go do it. Prove it to yourself. I know you're capable. We both know you're capable. Let's just do it. Let's make it a reality. What are you waiting for? And that is the question for today, right? You know I always have a challenge. You know I always make you do a little work here at the end. Grab a sheet of paper. And I want you to list all the situations that you've been making that statement. I know I would do it if I wanted to. I could do it if I wanted to. Just like, List out all the ones that are relevant to your life. And then I want you to go through each one of those statements and say, okay, why have I been saying that? What is the underlying fear? Or is this even something I really want to do? And here's the thing. I forgot to mention this earlier. If it's not something you want to do, then stop saying I could do it if I wanted to. Like just drop that all together and be like, that's not something that interests me. I don't want to do that. And then you can let go of the mental energy you've been carrying around and move on with your life and move on to the things that you do want to do. So it's either a vocabulary shift or it's put your money where your mouth is and let's make this happen. Start dedicating the time and the energy to it now so you can prove to yourself how capable you are and see where that is going to lead you. So on your sheet of paper, you should have a list of all those things. And you may carry this list around with you for like a week or two. And as you hear yourself say it, write it down and then go back later when you're by yourself and assess, why did I say that? What was behind it? What am I scared of? What is the fear that I'm afraid of? Is it failure? Is it rejection? Is it something else? And get really clear on that so that you can address it. And if you have a really long list, I want you to pick one thing. Just one thing that you are going to commit to doing, to moving the ball forward on that thing that you keep saying, yeah, I could do it if I wanted. 
I would love to hear what that is for you. Definitely don't hesitate to send me an email, Karen, K-A-R-I-N, at karenfreeland.com. Give me a shout. If you listen on Buzzsprout, you can always click the send me fan mail button at the top of each episode. I think that might come through on Apple too, or maybe even all the platforms, but you can just send me a text and let me know exactly what you're doing with this episode. Like I would love, love, love to hear from you. And as we kind of round out, I also would love for you to consider supporting me in this race. I will put a link if you would like to donate and give to the Julie Valentine Center. There is a link for you to donate to my campaign. Every single penny is going to the Julie Valentine Center. I've personally donated $100 myself uh, to kick things off. My goal is a thousand dollars. So I really need everyone's support to get there. And I'm so grateful that you would consider a little bit of your, a little bit of your treasure to support these other women and children in Greenville who need to know that they're not in this fight alone. And when you support another person who is being abused, you know, you really support the whole community that has been abused and you let them know that they're not in this alone. And so I'm so grateful for you considering it. I would be so grateful if you were able to contribute and just help me change the world one one dollar at a time, right? Like that's that's what we can do. You know, we only have so much time on this earth and we can have such a big impact when we work together for causes that are really, really important. I hope this got you thinking a little bit differently and that you now see the problem with saying, I could do it if I wanted. And now you've got a new way to approach when you catch yourself saying that so that you can truly get closer to living the life that you were meant to live. All right, until next time, stay fabulous. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're inspired to take action by committing to one of the tips or strategies we talked about in today's episode. And if you want accountability and support, I've got your back. Join my private Facebook group, Successful Working Women Rocking Reinvention today. You'll find a community of like-minded women waiting to support you, exclusive content and helpful resources to ensure you succeed. Lastly, if you loved this episode, do me a favor and be sure to leave a review. Together, we can encourage more women to live their purpose. See you next time.